Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the sixth day of November in the year of our Lord, 2023, and the massacre, the genocide in Gaza continues with an even more intense bombardment of um, Gaza last night, apparently. Um, Israel has apparently, well, we'll talk about that later. First of all, I discovered something just now, and I want to mention it. It's an interesting problem with search engines. I usually use a search engine called DuckDuckGo because they claim not to uh, mine your data so much. I tend to not believe them. <laughs> However, I noticed this. I searched uh, using, the, the, you know, that set as my default. And this is what I see. I searched for, uh, as you can see, Israelis protesting. But normally you'd think they would go and prioritize the most recent stuff and whatever. So why don't I see anything about Israelis protesting um, Israeli citizens, Israelis, not Jews, Israelis protesting what's going on in, in, in Israel about what's going on in Gaza? Shouldn't there be somebody there protesting? Why do I get no results? You know, you, there was a time when you could dependably use search engines. You'd know the kind of uh, things that would, you know, you'd just reword the, the search phrase or whatever, and you could eventually narrow it down to what you wanted. But now this uh, AI-enabled search engines, apparently, don't respond to your questions. They don't respond to your search. They want to throw other things in your face. Uh, it, it, it should be, you know, it, two words, Israelis protesting, should be sufficient, especially if you pri prioritize the most recent material, which would be a normal thing. Uh, you would get stories on that. Hmm, I didn't. I was wondering, what's going on here? So I thought, well, let's try a different search engine and see if it says what happens then. So what I have, I, I searched on, let's see, that's not what I want. Let's, let's go to, to Google, see if they do any better. Actually, they do. So I, there's a number, there's three videos that are shown here at the top. Uh, Israelis um, angry about the bombardment in Gaza. How come it doesn't show up in DuckDuckGo? Who's paying DuckDuckGo not to post stories? Current news about Israel, what's going on internally in Israel. I don't want to pursue that farther. I just want to alert you that there's a problem with search engines and bias. That's um, influence, apparently, problems. You ask for a simple search, and what you're looking for doesn't show up, and you try a different search engine with the same search, and the things do show up. What's going on? Uh, let me point something out, uh, that if you want to control public opinion, you do not have to completely censor information. You simply have to prioritize what you want people to believe and disseminate that broadly um, and make it difficult for people to find out the truth. You don't have to make it impossible. Because you know, most people are not going to look that hard. Most people probably don't care. Most people, you can simply put an ice cream in their cone in their hand and say, shut up and be good. And they will do what you say. American society is uh, degenerate and it is, well, it's, it's on its last legs. It's finished, really. It's, it was not built on truth. It was built on man's opinions. Uh, you cannot build justice on a foundation of sand, and that was what the Enlightenment was, a foundation of sand, not truth. <sighs> well, let's uh, leave that for now. As I was thinking this morning, 
of the ongoing situation in uh, in the Middle East in general and why we have this perpetual system of wars going on there. I mean, this has been going on uh, for longer than I've been alive now. Uh, I mean, I was I was born in fifty five, so fifty six. There was uh, the one of the problems is we're not being told the truth. We're not being told the truth. Uh, it's not that you can't find the truth. It's that they don't tell you the truth. Israel, the, the, the Israeli government does not speak the truth. They speak lies. They, they want their point of view out. They don't want the truth out. There's a difference between a point of view and the truth. If you have a point of view and you don't love the truth, then you do not let the other side speak. You do not want people to know the truth. You want them to believe you. And that is that dominates the world today, and it certainly dominates what Israel is doing, and it dominates the United States, the governments, uh, government in Israel and government of the United States. In particular, I can't speak about other governments. Well, I know Canada is doing the same stuff, too. They're not interested in an informed populace. They want an uninformed populace, informed by them alone. They want to control the information. And they don't have to control all the information to do that. All they need is to convince a majority of the people. And that's sufficient. And they can just ignore everybody else. Unless you're particularly noisy, and then, then you can be disappeared or who knows what. Well, look what they're still doing to Assange. The United States is still, you know, they... they what are they going to do with him? Put him on some dark in some dark site someplace? You know, there was no reper repercussions when it was exposed what George W. and his dark minions were doing with their dark site prisons all over uh, as a result of 9-11. Torture sites, out outsourcing torture because it's not legal in the United States, so they just do it in other places, which is why the detention center at Guantanamo in Cuba— was built so they could torture legally outside the jurisdiction of the United States courts. And the American people didn't seem to have a problem with that. Why? Because they were sold a narrative. It, they, were never, they never heard why 9-11 happened. It was a result of America's meddling in the Middle East. American troops stationed for extended periods of time in Saudi Arabia, which is the holy land of Islam. I mean, that's where Mecca and Medina are. So you have American troops stationed there and in all over other places, which is an utter offense to a serious Muslim, and American cultural imperialism that American values, the American values of consumerism and materialism and godlessness and sexual immorality and just all this stuff that is utterly offensive to traditional societies in general, including American Christians. We just aren't offended enough. See, if you're in the midst of it, you tend to get used to it, which is not good. <laughs> Not that Christians, you know, but the Christian response to a lot of this stuff is not appropriate either. I mean, we, we need to find a biblical way to respond. God has biblical ways to respond. Uh, separate ourselves from it. Say, okay, you want, to, you want to practice that stuff? You go practice it. If you want to do that, you'll reap the consequences. But God, if God doesn't stop them from doing it, why should we? But when it comes becomes a matter of justice, if you want to go... Uh, uh, swim in a cesspool, that's your business. But if you try to throw my kids into your cesspool, that becomes my business. When you try to teach your garbage to other people that don't want it, that becomes our business. So there, there's, there's reasonable solutions. This is, there's a drive to totalitarianism everywhere. There's uh, the totalitarianism of liberalism, the totalitarianism of the of wokeism. Wokeism is is uh, almost indistinguishable from 
from what's going on in Israel with the uh, the Zionist project. It's it's an ex, it's a it has a victim men mentality, and it has a superiority complex too. That's you have this this mixture of of um, dysfunctional personality going on, uh, where. On the one hand, I'm the victim. On the other hand, I want to beat you because I want to be the master and in inflict punish. You know, it's like a person that, that seems to be driven to inflict punishment on people because they suffered things, but it's not the people that caused them to suffer. You know, why don't you go beat the Germans? Why don't you establish your Zionist project in Berlin? But the problem is the Zionist project. It is, you cannot, and, and where it was founded. Okay, why don't you get a hold of uh, of Musk, and, you know, he wants to have a colony on Mars. Why don't you volunteer to build your Zionist entity on Mars, where there's no people to dispossess? Or at Mount Sinai. I mean, you could have probably bought that from the, from the Saudis. I mean... Their actual ownership of that is a little dubious, anyway. Um, whether it's whether it's in uh, Sinai Peninsula or or on you know, over in uh, the Saudi uh, in Arabian Desert, there there's there's some controversy about where it was, but it doesn't matter. Just find a a mountain someplace and declare it via Sinai and and go go. Uh, well, of course, if you actually re go back and read the biblical account of that, I don't think you'd want to live there. Uh, because God was there, and uh, well, at least a manifestation of God. The New Testament actually says says the, the law was mediated through angels, not directly. And I believe that because the New Testament, Jesus Himself says that no man has seen God at any time. Which means Moses didn't see God face to face. He saw a, a angel representing God. That was it. All right, but I don't think uh, it, it seems to me the uh, the experience of Israel in the wilderness with God was uh, not something the Israel of today would survive any better than they did. Judgment would be constantly being poured out on the wickedness of it, and that was a particular covenant for a particular time. It is now obsolete; it's past. You can't go back to it. It's not necessary. So you're going to build a temple and offer the blood of thousands of sheep and goats and bulls and pigeons and really you know this this whole i i was thinking this morning i think this whole temple rebuilding thing is a scam to control the jews of the world i think they want to use their zionist project as a means of controlling the jews do you know why because if you go back to the uh, mosaic covenant all the Jews, all the males, have to appear, other than children, all the males have to appear before God at the temple three times a year. Imagine the kind of commercial scam that could be. Enforced, <laughs> enforced tourism. Yes, so you're going to require the, the rest of the world's Jews, some 7 million Jews, to come to Israel to worship at your religious site. How much are you going to charge? There was a temple scam going on in Jesus' day, too. Big temple scam. The temple became a big business. And the selling of, of certified animals for sacrifice became a big business. And Jesus rebuked them for that. Do you think uh, Netanyahu and company have, have any motives along those lines? Of course they do, because they're not servants of God. Those people are ungodly, wicked, utterly wicked. They will bring nothing but destruction upon the Jewish people, which they're already doing. But the, the, the problem is with this, uh, if you look at 
the whole region and the militarization of, of the whole thing, you look at Hamas, you look at Hezbollah, you look at uh, the nations around there, and the history of the last 75 or more years, really, because it starts before 1948, it is, it is all centered around the original, we could call this the original sin, in this case, not I'm not you know in a, the the foundational injustice that was done to the Palestinian people, and it is a kind of injustice that doesn't go away because they are still in exile, they are still displaced. It's not like something that was done wrong and okay, it's a wrong deed and okay, let's get over it. No, because the displacement of that entire population, which was larger than the Jewish population. Is still there. They're still interned. They're still in refugee camps. They're, they're still deprived of their ancestral land that they lived on for generations and generations. Because this 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 ideology of Zionism that was that that's not Jewish either, really. It's a secular ideology of, of a Zionist state, a political entity. Um, in that place, I think Britain offered them something in Uganda or something. But why, why would Britain, you know, Britain doesn't have the right to offer anything to anyone except land in the UK. And then they'd have to deprive the people that are on that land now of their just occupation of it. So you cannot build justice on injustice. It's not possible. The only thing you'll do is create a monument to the injustice and a law. You'll say, we're just. No, you're not. You're in the wrong. And you'll always be in, a wrong, in the wrong as long as you perpetuate this Zionist project. The project has to go. The Zionist project has to go. You cannot have a Judenstadt in Palestine. If you want to build that, you have to go someplace where there are no people. You have to build it justly, and I don't think you can build such a thing justly, because God is not the God of the Jews only. He's God, the God of all. There is only one God, the God of the whole world, the God of creation, the God who made it all. Unless you're worshiping some tr uh, tribal local deity. You can't have your own thing. That was all just temporary until the Messiah would come, and he did. And he did away with all those offerings. He made them unnecessary because he was the Lamb of God. He was the atonement for the sins of the whole world. That is why he died on that cross in your place for your sins and the sins of everyone else. You cannot have one God and have a local religion. There is only one God. He is the God of all. Otherwise, he's not God at all. He is not your God, your private God, Israel. And you don't worship in any way, otherwise you wouldn't be doing what you're doing. So apparently, again, this is, this is a festering sore that cannot be healed. What, what You know, you, you, sometimes you get a wound and it gets infected. You have to clean it. You cannot leave it. You have to clean it out. And the Zionist project has to be dismantled. You can never, it can never be just. It can never be right there. I mean, if they want to, it, it's, it's the very principle of it is unjust, that you have spe a special people that have special rights just because you're of a particular identity. That's, that's absurd. How does that work with, with the, the God who is the God of all? The one God, the only God. It doesn't. It doesn't work at all. It's irrational. It's foolish. It's childish. It's sinful. So what is Israel doing today? Well, what they've been doing, they're just ramping it up. I, I think they're... Uh, there, I saw a really ridiculous story. Uh, it was uh, it was the BBC. 
they had a reporter on site in Gaza in an Israeli armored vehicle, a, a, um, it would have been a, um, like an armored personnel carrier. So he's giving his report live from inside this vehicle in Gaza. And it's like, this is objective reporting. So what's his viewpoint? What's his viewpoint? <laughs> he, he's inside a, a piece of steel moving in Gaza, surrounded by Israeli soldiers that are killing the people in Gaza. You know, it's like, and, and he's reporting from them, not those that are being attacked, but from the attackers. And this is what the BBC calls objective reporting. Really? That's sort of a skewed point of view there. Oh, yeah, but the, see, the United States military has been doing that. Uh, they learned the lesson in Vietnam. You don't want a free press. You, you don't want report, reporters out there actually reporting the truth of what you're doing. No, you want to control the narrative, which seems to be universal in this world and with the, the, the technology. The technology of the Internet can be used both for good and for evil. It can, it can be used to disseminate truth, and it can be used to suppress the truth and, can, and disseminate lies. And with AI and increasing, the, makes it makes the evil much more um, possible. It's much more. Uh, AI is able is a tool that enables you c to control things much easier than conventional computer programming. It's just dangerous, and it will become increasingly dangerous, and obviously so. And there's a lot. There's a number of people that are relatively intelligent that are warning about AI and the potential of the thing going bad. Does the Bible tell us about it? Yes, it does. The image of the beast. <sighs> Warns about this kind of stuff. And these things will become clearer as we progress and we're moving forward rapidly now toward those events. But Israel appears to have severed uh, the uh, Gaza Strip. There's a, well, should I bring that up? I should. I should, I guess. Uh, I have to use, uh, I don't have maps that show these particular movements, so I'm going to use uh, uh, Google Earth, I guess. And see if I can. Where am I? Oops, I've covered up my my screen here, so that's going to be a problem. Okay, here, let me. Not that I need to see my face, but I need to know that I've got the right screen up. So let's go to, oh, come on. I think I've turned off most of the stuff on, on this, like the roads and whatnot. Let me see, maybe I should re-energize the roads. Yeah. So again, here's, of course, for the, for the, ge for the geographically challenged, this is, this is the most of the world right here. This is, well, I shouldn't say most of it. Actually, actually, most of the, wor of the world's over here. But China and India, that's where most of the world lives. But here, uh, of course, you got Ukraine up there. There's a festering sore that, well, that sore is beginning to, oh, God, help, Israel, uh, help Russia do what's right in, in Ukraine. Because, well, to eliminate the Nazi regime is necessary. Uh, Putin's special mil mil uh, military operation was absolutely necessary. Justice demands it. Uh, it it's him as a, as a leader of Russia, uh, a Christian, and uh, self-proclaimed Christian and publicly acknowledges. Uh, it's, I'm amazed. You listen to the, the Russian officials, and you'll see them frequently mention God, and not in a political way. I mean, it's just as if that's part of who they are. They're just referring to God in, the, in a natural way, not as, not as somebody like Biden would or Trump 
where it's forced. No, it's part of their of, it's part of their belief system. He's part of their belief system. Uh, Russia is historically majority uh, Christian. It's a Christian. Um, uh, well, it's not a nation now. You call it a, a, a con well a Commonwealth sort of. Uh, what do they call it? Uh, can't remember at the moment. But there's you know all these ethnic nations, and they all manage to live together in relative peace, usually, unless somebody's stirring up trouble. So you have you have Jews, and and not so much anymore. Most a lot of the the, the Russian Jews have mo moved to Israel back in the 80s and uh, 90s when they, there was an opportunity to do so. I suggest maybe you consider moving back, <laughs> because Russia is a whole lot better place than the Soviet Union was. It's it's gone past the difficult time now. And the sanctions have vastly strengthened Russia. I mean, it, it, they, they've strengthened them in so many ways. Russia has really been benefited. We should, they should send a, uh, a like a monument like this, like the Statue of Liberty, <laughs> to the United States, saying thank you very much for your sanctions. They have done such wonders for us, uh, because Russia was supposed had to turn to themselves rather than to the West, which was is poisonous. Western society is, is a toxic compound now. I mean, it's, it's gone that bad. And so when Russia was forced to sever their ties by the, the, the West cutting them off, they, they, they benefited Russia. Their, the Russian society and Russia, they become um, much more independent and can, don't have to worry about what the West thinks anymore, which is really good, really good. And there's actually Christians immigrating to Russia. Even the even the Far East, uh, because they want to to live a to raise a family in a a decent environment where their children aren't exposed to all the corruption that's in the United States and Europe. Well, let's go down to Israel down here. Of course, here's Turkey. I don't know. Some of these countries, I'm not sure. I think they've been compromised, but there's the, the citizens in places like Turkey and Syria and Jordan and Egypt might just, you know, how long can they, uh, they, they're they sitting on a powder keg if they don't act in a, if they can't ignore the Palestinians at this point because of the, the genocide that's going on in front of everybody's eyes and in spite of all Israel's attempt to interfere with communication coming out of Gaza, it still comes out. And you still see, you know, you might not see so much on YouTube because YouTube is, you know, their community standards. In some ways, I can see that. But if your video is marked for, say, 18 and over, what's the big deal? Uh, unless you're, you've got contracts to suppress information from the government. That'd be, that'd be an interesting question to ask. Do you suppose I can search on Google for that? <laughs> the problem is with anything like that, the ability to suppress information that you don't want out there makes it easy to, to uh, corrupt things. So here's Israel or the, the uh, what they call themselves, they call themselves Israel, the, the Zionist project. And th this is the problem. Uh, and really, the, the two-state solution is not practical. I mean, look, look at the, see, here's, even if, see, they, they mark the West Bank, but this is, this is just, <laughs> it's not separate. The, it, it is not a state. It is not, it, it's simply an enslaved population. They're totally controlled. Uh, and it's, most of it's gobbled up by settlements. They, they just steal the land. I mean, this is this. See, this is not something simply of the past. This is this is like in the United States. You had the issue of slavery, which affected only part of the United States anyway. Uh, but that issue ended more than a hundred years ago. Hundred, almost one hundred and fifty years ago now, and it's it's. There's still, uh, people, we are still recovering in many ways from that because it wasn't healed properly. And there, when people, people are still trying to maintain the animosity, uh, stir up the animosity on both sides. The wokeism, for example, is a, 
an attempt to to reignite the hatred that uh, the results of, of uh, that period of slavery, uh, which was already, I mean, it was already illegal to import slaves and everything else. Uh, the, the Constitution itself put a time limit on some of this stuff. Uh, so, you know, to, to, they were already moving, trying to move in that direction. And even even during the, uh, the antebellum years in the South, there was, especially among Baptists, there was many, many um, uh, societies dedicated to the abolition of slavery. But wars impede fixing problems because all kinds of other issues get involved, like loyalties. So you end up supporting things you despise. You know, what, you know, if, and governments will use things and amplify things for their own benefit. And one of those things is what happened on the 7th of October. So the Israeli government deliberately was staging provocations. Whether they were uh, looking to incite um, Hamas or not, they were definitely inciting them. And th they didn't know, of course, exactly what the response would be. But they were, were inciting on the Temple Mount over a period of time, and this has been an ongoing thing. And they definitely, this is part of the pro, one of the projects of the Netanyahu radical religious Zionists is to rebuild the temple, which is absurd. Totally, totally absurd. Really? So you're going to, what, televise, uh, live stream animal sacrifices from the Temple Mount? Is that what you plan on doing, Israel? So we can watch animals die 24 hours a day? Thousands of animals dying when the, sin, when the blood of animals cannot take away sin anyway? When God's lamb has already come and paid the price? It's done. The only reason to rebuild the temple would be to control the Jewish population. Yes, you must come here three times a year. Now, th think of how you could abuse that. If you don't support our—see, the, the law of, of Moses requires that all the um, males over, say, 12 years old go up to the temple three times a year. So you, how could you abuse that? Well, what could you require— to allow access to the temple in order to fulfill your duty. Can I, just start imagining the abuses. Like a swearing an oath of allegiance to Netanyahu, for example. The ways you could abuse God's word. Human, sinful, wicked human beings use religion for their own purposes. They will... And it's just like in the United States, we have this thing called the prosperity gospel, which is that God wants you rich, and the way you get God's blessing is to give money to the man proclaiming the message of God wants you rich. It's a scam. And they will suffer for their words. The reason God doesn't judge things the way we think he should is, I believe, is because if once he starts doing that, it applies to everyone. Once judgment comes, it applies to the whole world. You understand what I'm saying? So if you say, why isn't God judging what Israel is doing in Gaza? Is because God is not a respecter of persons. He's not going to limit it to one thing. God's judgment is falling all the time. But it, that's what is described in Romans chapter 1. When people reject the light that God has given them, he gives them over to their own wicked desires. And uh, they basically are turning away from the light into, into darkness, and he just lets you go. All right? You want to go that way? Go ahead.
That's just God's judgment, which just piles up the judgment they'll get when God's judgment actually starts. So this is a, a uh, an ongoing, as you sow, so shall ye reap kind of thing. But then there is another final judgment, too, which is different. And once that comes, uh, it, there's no discriminating between those doing things in Gaza and you doing things. See, everybody gets judged. Which means, see, at that time, too, is during this period of time, since the Messiah, since his resurrection and ascension and uh, outpouring of the promises of the new covenant at Pentecost, um, and I can explain these greater for a lot of people that don't understand this, but I'm not going to do it right now. Since that time, it's, it's been almost 2,000 years now, almost exactly 2,000 years, it's a, a little time now. Uh, during this period, the, God's purpose has not been judgment. God's purpose is calling people to himself from every nation, tribe, and tongue, calling out a people for his own name which is uh, uh, the people who trust in him, the people of the faith of Abraham, the, who are the real people, yeah, the, the real people of God, those who trust in him. So the, the message of the gospel, the gospel, the good news that, that the Messiah has come and he died for the sins of the whole world, and the, the, everybody who desires can be reconciled to God and forgiven all their sins through faith in him, in what Christ did for us and in Christ himself, because he is the, the connection between God and man, the only connection between God and man. He is both God and man. That's, it's a difficult doctrine, but it's absolutely necessary. And once when you understand it, it's like, oh, that makes sense. But it's, it's something that we can't totally comprehend. How can God become a man? Well, because he made man in his own image. So God can become a man without ceasing to be God because we were created to be his image. So, And God's plan is to, that was ruined in the garden, and it's, God's plan is to restore God's purpose in creation and man being the epitome of God's creation. He's restoring it, man being the image of God. In the moral image of God, power is irrelevant. <laughs> power is not an issue. Uh, but to, to be, we are supposed to be God's image, be his temples, be his dwelling place in his creation. And that's what God's plan is. And God's just working to complete that. Right now, during this period, he's, he's the message of salvation in Jesus Christ through faith is going out in the world. And once it's gone out into all the world, and shoot, well, that has to be pretty much now. I mean, with the Internet and everything else, everybody has access to, to more than sufficient uh, evidence that the proof that this is true is the resurrection. Uh, the scripture declares this. The Apostle Paul declares that that God has given proof to all men, all humanity, that Jesus is the one. He is the promised one that was promised from the beginning, fall, promised from the fall, uh, and that He is coming again to judge the world. The proof of this and who, uh, that and Jesus is this one is the resurrection. Jesus rose from the dead. And the evidence for that is overwhelming. I mean, it, it, you, there's more evidence for that than any other event in history. I mean, you had at, at one time, he, he, he appeared over a period of 40 days. And I mean, his disciples ate with him, touched him, spoke with him. And at one time, he appeared to over 500 people at, as, a, as a group. So it's not like, and this was done in a community. People knew these things. It wasn't done out in some cave in the wilderness someplace with one person making claims that I saw this and I heard that or whatever. No, this was, it's just like the, the, the New Testament was written in this community. 
so which is different than than it being written outside of a community. In other words, it was written in a living community of eyewitnesses of what Jesus had done and who he was, written by people that knew him, that were uh, many of them were his his disciples. John and um, Matthew, for example, were chosen by Jesus as his apostles, and they were witnesses to everything he did during his earthly ministry. The apostle Paul came a little later, but God, Christ revealed himself personally to him also. Uh, so it was... Uh, Christianity is not simply based on the revelation of one man, one claim. It was based on, on the reality of Christ's life in this, the historical reality that was witnessed by the entire people. You had those hostile to him and those who believed in him, but these and all the miracles he did, but this was this was not simply something that somebody could make up uh, hundreds of years later. I mean, we have we have fragments from the New Testament that date all the way back to the end of the first century, which was, which was only a uh, John, the, the last of the apostles, uh, the last one to die, who was the youngest one. Uh, he uh, he wrote well the Book of Revelation, for example, in the early part of the nineties, somewhere between ninety and ninety five A.D. AD or C.E. for some of you people that out there. Why is it called the Common Era? Because it's all focused around Jesus Christ. The Jews and the Muslims use a different calendar. I know that. But if you're going to use our calendar, why not acknowledge what our calendar is dated from? Anno Domini, the year of our Lord. B.C. is before Christ. It's dated from his birth. We don't know the exact date, the exact year, but it's dated from that, from his coming. Now, and, and, and the Muslims, I recognize the Muslims of this world believe that Jesus is the prophet of God, a very important prophet. They just need to know about him in a more uh, full manner. So here is Israel. Oop, I can't, I got to use the right screen here. And Gaza is here. All right, so what's going on today or last night? Uh Let's see, do they have that labeled so I can read it? Salah al Din, yeah, okay. That, that's a major north south road. It's not literally, no. <laughs> this is north, this is south. So it's not exactly north south, but upper versus lower here. So what's happened? See, here's Gaza, Gaza City. This, so, and then you've got a an area in between uh, south of Gaza City that's uh, relatively unpopulated. I mean, you've got these these are these are well, you see uh, like suburbs mixed with agricultural land, like around my neighborhood here. So you've got Gaza, the urban Gaza City up here, and then you've got these areas down here that are uh, fields mixed with scattered subdivisions, shall we say. And Salah al-Din goes from upper or northern Gaza to the south. Well, the Israelis have claimed that this is a, a safe zone, a safe passage down here, but they're doing everything they can to destroy it. Israel, uh, the Israeli government is nothing but a pack of liars. That there, are, there are things they say that are for the consumption of the world, but don't believe what they say. Look at what they do. They are attacking this road. They are destroying everything that moves around along it while they're saying this is a safe passage. They're liars. Look at what they do. So what they've done is exactly what I thought they would do, is you've got this relatively open area here. You've got uh, highway number 
10 that goes from a four lane road that goes from uh, the coast over to near the uh, the the eastern edge of Gaza here. And then south of that, you've got another four lane road that comes across from the coast, too. So what they did, well, exactly what I, I, I did a video on this, but I didn't post it. What I speculated was Israel would launch a armored assault. I thought they'd come from the coast, but they didn't. They came from inland. And then you go up around, along these two roads and you, you isolate, take, take this central area here that is relatively unpopulated, uh, although Israel's <laughs> apparently is losing quite a bit of armor and everything else in this. Uh, yeah, there's probably tunnels all over underneath there. So what Israel will try to do, one of the things they'll try to do is, is use this strip to try to locate the tunnels and then uh, use uh, bunker buster bombs to try to destroy the north-south tunnels to isolate the north so they can complete their genocide up here. See, they're not actually allowing people to go south. You go south and they try to kill you. So what they're doing is they're saying they're allowing people to go south, but they're not really allowing people to go south because this is not a fight against Hamas. This is the purpose of this is the destruction of the Palestinians, especially those in Gaza. Once they get done with Gaza, they'll go on to the West Bank. They're already doing it over there on a smaller scale. This this is they're they're taking it's it seems like they're they're they've uh, they've crossed the Rubicon. They're they're cast, the, the the dice are cast, and they're going for broke. Uh, this is their best opportunity, I think, what they've determined. They've got a weak president, utterly weak president uh, in in the United States, and a Congress they've completely purchased. And they used they're using October seventh. They've they've spun this false narrative. I think it's the evidence is going to come out increasingly, and what I've say, stated to others are stating that it was really the Israeli military that massacred the people, their own people. They did it. It's, it's not that it was done to, to deliberately massacre, but because of their indiscriminate uh, use of their power while they were in a complete panic because on the 7th, Hamas gave them a bloody nose and they don't like it. It's a smack and bloody nose. See, Hamas is not an existential threat to Israel. No. I mean, this is a, a people, numerous people, but they're wall, they've got them walled up in this prison. So Hamas, what did they get, like 1,500 people out and staged these raids, and they were very effective at it, but it's nothing more than a bloody nose. I mean, they couldn't have conquered Israel. They simply do not have the manpower. They do not have the resources. They can't overthrow the state of Israel. It's not possible. So what do they do? They strike back. You know, you, you pick on a person and you're assaulting them. And they turn around and land a good one on your face and give you a bloody nose. But that doesn't stop them from doing what they're doing to you. Now they use, they're using this. Uh, Netanyahu and, and uh, they, they use this and their false narrative that the Hamas massacred all these people. That's, and most of these stories have already been debunked. The beheading children, in, infants and everything else. It was all a lie. And uh, even though they know it was a lie, even though the uh, the military, the IDF was not willing to confirm these things, because they knew it wasn't true. Just like the IDF. See, that this is going to come out because you cannot hide this because those that were involved, the Israeli military, knew they know what actually happened on the 7th. And you can't keep that contained forever. There's no, you cannot keep a, a conspiracy of silence going forever because there are people, people have consciences. Even the Israelis have consciousness. People, some of them will, will, they will be unable to retain uh, their sins without confessing them, without confessing what they have done, what they were accomplices in, what they were ordered to do or what they did voluntarily, just like the My Lai massacre, once it started to come out, I mean, then people are have, are burdened by their deeds, and they want to unload that. And they will. 
And when that comes out, that will be the end of Netanyahu. So he's, they're, they're, they, they know this is their one shot. They have this opportunity. So they're using October 7th. And this is why I think also they are so vociferous in attacking anyone that even mentions there was a context to October 7th, like the, the General Secretary of the United Nations, Guterres. Why do they attack him so? Why do they attack anyone who, who raises any doubts about what actually happened? Because they're guilty. It is the guilty who want to turn the lights off so you can't see what they've done or what they're doing. You know, the, the, uh, as, as Jesus said, it, it, that those that do what is right, they come to the light, that people may see what they did. Those that are doing evil, they've run from the light. They hide in the darkness because their deeds are evil. John chapter 3. All right, so that this is exactly what is, the Israeli government is doing, I think. They, they, again, based on the evidence I've looked at over the last month, and I'm not stupid, really. <laughs> not boasting, but I'm not stupid. I'm not an expert at these things, but it's pretty obvious. It's not hard to, uh, if you have a love of the truth and you want to find the truth out, it's there if you want to look for it. But you got to look. You've got to look. You can't listen to what the authorities say. They are not trustworthy. They have motives for not, uh, for you not knowing the truth, especially in this case. If uh, it, well, it's just like uh, you know the uh, the bomb that went off, the explosion that went off at the the, the Baptist. It's usually called the Baptist Hospital. I I've heard reports, uh, statements that all that was uh, Anglican. I don't know. It doesn't matter. At that hospital where five hundred were killed in the courtyard, or there have been claims of that, uh, that even if it was an uh, um, Islamic resistance missile, well, uh, rocket, they don't have missiles, rockets, that hit there from a malfunction, well, th they should just own up. That would be the, the right thing to do. It would be the sensible thing to do, because confessing to a, a, an equipment failure uh, everybody can understand that. The, the the Palestinian people aren't going to condemn them for a, a failure in a homemade rocket when they were not it wasn't aimed at the hospital. So it's it's so that's that's the way you deal with things like that. You deal with them honestly, you bring shine the light on it. Yeah, that's what happened. Uh, to try to cover up something like that, which is not a deliberate act, is doesn't make any sense. But it also, I mean, it's not like it can be concealed anyway, because the people that were killed there, their bodies contain the evidence, the shrapnel, the, or the wounded, that, that identify what kind of weapon it was. And there's pieces laying around. You know, there would have been pieces laying around. The forensic evidence, just like the, the massacres that took place at Raim. You see all these burned out cars that were obviously shot up by, by aircraft, probably helicopters. Um. Or some of the other settlements where the houses were, were there's obvious shell damage from like tank, tank rounds that blew through the wall and splattered fragments all over inside. It's obvious. I mean, this, this is, th these weren't Hamas weapons. No, they didn't have those kind of weapons. So it, it, the, the bodies contain the evidence of who was responsible. But the Israelis are covering it up. Why? Because they're trying to use this, blame Hamas for what they themselves did in their panic and their foolishness. Covering up their own backside while they're using it as a weapon against Hamas, just like the United States uses the label terrorist to silence or destroy anyone they don't like. Hamas is not a terrorist organization. Uh-uh. No way. No way. That's just a tool the United States government uses. So what's going on here? The, Israeli has, the Israelis have severed uh, Gaza in this area, which is basically unpopulated. And their plan is uh, they, they've been doing intensive. Last night they were doing intensive, heavy bombardment of central Israel, which is the area they've got here. Why? Well, if they're using American bunker busters, they— probably 
used the opportunity they had when they uh, put armor in this area to try to locate subterranean tunnels using uh, seismic imaging, sound imaging. Um, uh, you might be able to locate, you know, thinking, how do you find these things? Well, there's technology. Uh, the, the technology we use for, for finding oil underground, for example. So you use sound waves and uh, how they reflect and refract sound waves and multiple acoustic sensors. And you can do a, a, a rough imaging of what's underground. A radar doesn't penetrate very deep, so you have to use a, a but sound does. It's not entirely accurate, but they can get some information. And even sun, uh, even without that, uh, it's like on the the fence around Gaza. They have uh, they put a a uh, subterranean fence underneath that goes down several meters, equipped with acoustic sensors, so they can hear. You know, if there's activity in the rock underneath, you can hear the sound of of people or miners or whatever doing working underneath. Uh, so that's uh, how they, they use that to try to locate tunnels that were coming out, but they didn't have the ability to do that inside Gaza, but now in this area here, it'd be logical to try to identify uh, major tunnels going north and south and then attack them with bunker buster airdropped bombs, which weigh about 5,000 pounds. Most of that is simple mass. They're like a, I think they've been using uh, old naval cannon barrels from big ships to, to something, a very thick steel casing that can survive the impact. And they drop them at very high speed so they penetrate deep and then explode, which is probably what they're doing. Uh, now, last night, to try to disrupt the tunnel networks. So they're cutting this area off as much as possible. Uh, the reports are Salah al-Din, which is supposed to be a safe route, has been surrounded, and they are destroying anything that moves south on it. They're claiming it's a safe route. Yeah, go south on, on Salah al-Din, and then we'll shoot you. Uh, deliberately target, targeting ambulances, deliberately targeting everything. Uh, Israel is... They're, these are genocidal maniacs. I mean, the, the, they're liars. Well, if you're going to kill people, a genocide, uh, yeah, you're probably a liar, too. <laughs> Why would you believe people are, you know, who are visibly in the act of genocide? So apparently what they're going to do is, is cut off this northern section here and eliminate everything in there. All life in this section is what it appears they're up to. And then they'll move farther south and just keep pushing, pushing, pushing to the south, driving people before them. Uh, this is an old strategy. The Germans, for example, uh, when they there was lots of refugees free, fleeing from their advances, they would actually come in behind and machine gun the crowds that were trying to flee down the roads in order to, to speed them up and get them and pack the roads to, to use fear to uh, as a weapon and use the refugees as a weapon to, to, f to further their purpose. So they'll be trying, if they don't want to do complete genocide, they'll, they'll just wipe out the top area here. That should instill, pl instill plenty of fear and then try to push south farther. Uh, unless they decide just to kill everybody. Of course, the whole the whole uh, of Gaza is under an, uh, a genocidal siege. If you cut people off from food, from water, from fuel, from electricity, uh, from the, the necessities of life, you're killing them. You're committing murder. It's just slower. It's still murder. And the, the so-called relief columns, if, if you let in five trucks, the normal, I was, I was guessing it would be like 500 to 1,000 trucks a day would be required to supply Gaza. I was right. It was 500. I was a little on the high side. But that, that is, yeah, this is two and a half million people. That, that requires a lot of trucks. A, a dozen trucks won't even begin to scratch the surface of the need. 
It's so you could have a dozen trucks coming in every day, and it's still genocide. It is still mur murder. In the in the death camps, the Nazis didn't stop feeding the Jews entirely. They just fed them enough to slowly starve them to death, instead of quickly starve them to death. Starvation is a slow process anyway. But if you don't have water, see, if, if they're having to drink whatever water they can find, they're going to be dying of diseases, too. So Israel is engaged in a terribly barbaric action here. And you've got all the dead bodies underneath the concrete up here that aren't recovered. Uh, this, this is just a, a, a recipe for absolute disease and pestilence and everything else. And Israel very well knows it. And anybody with any knowledge should know it, what they're doing. This is, you can't remain silent. So anyway, this, uh, this north-south route, uh, the uh, Salah al-Din al has been declared a safe route, but Israeli is, the Israelis are using it as a murder route. So it serves them two purposes. One, they, they instill fear uh, and kill people when they decide to kill them, uh, but it also uh, uh, is designed to create a panic, too, to force people to go south or to stay. Either way, they win. If they stay in Gaza City, they'd kill them. If they flee south, they'll get around to that one way or the other. But they're running out of time because the, uh, the world is uh, slow to mobilize, but it will mobilize. It is. Uh, there will be hell to pay. And Israel knows that. In the United States, uh, support in the United States is only temporary. Once the American people, the American people, not the American government, not the elite, not the globalists, not the neocons, not the, not, not the crazy uh, uh, university people, uh, the, the people that are poisoning America, uh, they're something else. But once the Americans are generally a decent people. You know, if, you, if they know what's going on. So you got to keep us in the dark, and you can only do that for a while. Uh, you have the initial reaction with the narrative. Of course, Hamas massacred all these people. This is a false narrative, and it will not hold up. But it's still being spread. The stories about the, the beheaded babies is still being routinely repeated by Christian pastors. They're idiots. They don't know you better. They just believe the media. Uh, Christians are not the smartest people in the world. <laughs> we're, we're like sheep. We're dumb. Sheep are dumb animals. <laughs> Are sheep. We're we're not we're not cunning. We're not we we are we are trusting. We tend to be trusting. Trusting the wrong people often. That's why scammers like these these liars like Joel Osteen and um, John Hagee do what they do because Christians are not that bright and they're not then they're trusting. They tend to trust especially people that claim to be pastors. You know, it's not wise, but it's what happens. Uh, good pastors are, are rare. <laughs> They're, it's a shame, shameful thing to say, but it's true. Uh, so the, they will work their way south, but it's, it, the, the, as the lack of water and food and the unsanitary, you know, unburied dead and everything else, impossible to, to clean up the mess. As this, as this continues, this will truly become a, a, a real mess. And that's what Israel wants. Either the people flee into, into the Sinai to die there, or they die in Gaza. And that's, or... Or the world puts a stop to it now. The only hope with Biden is maybe if he recognizes in his own political, personal, corrupt interest that if he does not stop this, he's going down. He will not be reelected, ever. And America will be, as long as America is 
is protecting Israel, America will be subject to terrorist attacks. Revenge attacks, because it deserves it. it deserves attacks of vengeance for supporting genocide against the Palestinian people. It is the injustice against the Palestinians that is the festering wound that cannot be healed until it's exposed and the Zionist project is terminated. Not the people of Israel, not the Jewish people, but this Zionist project of building a Judenstadt in the land of Palestine. It must end. It must end. There cannot be any peace. There cannot be heal. It's like an infected wound. It has to be cleansed out to be healed. The ongoing injustice that is at the root of the Judenstadt, the, palace, the, the uh, Zionist project, it has to end because that is the problem. It is not Jews living in Palestine is the problem. It is displacing the, the lawful residents of Palestine, including by the UN, by the League of Nations, by the British. That whole project has to be abandoned. And the people that are there have to learn to live together in peace. And there's a way to do that. And it's not a two-state solution. You can have separate communities. You can have, in America, we have different communities. We've got, if you go into major cities, there's, there, there'll be an Asian, you know, there'll be a Filipino community, and there's a, maybe a, a particular Asian communities, and there's uh, other Asian communities, a Thai community or a Vietnamese community, where refugees have come from all over, and they're especially first-generation refugees. Uh, their children become Americanized really quick, but, uh, and they want them to. But especially when you haven't, you're speaking, uh, English isn't your first language, so you, you tend to congregate with those that are like you, that you, you're more comfortable with, that you can communicate with better, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but we have to live together, and we, we work that out. Well, there, one of the problems we have in the United States is the Constitution has failed. The limitations on the federal government has failed. So you have a, uh, a government that's more and more to totalitarian, uh, and the leftists and others uh, and the, the capitalists want that. Uh, they, they want the control, but it is only with a limited government, uh, general government, that you can have freedom for different ethnicities and different communities to live as a community, but in peace with other communities. So when you say everyone has to be like this, you all have to be Italians, for example, ridiculous example, but a ridiculous example. Uh, you can't be uh, Polish and you can't be English. You got to all be Italians. Well, what does that cause? Nothing but strife. But if you have an Italian community and an English community and a Polish community and all the other communities that live together in the United States can do this, but the problem is when you get a, a, par, a central government that decides they want to be totalitarian and shape everybody into a particular image, like the wokeism, the, the, the uber, the, the humanist, uh, the, the humanist uh, mindset, godless mindset, can't do that. You have to have a limited government overall that holds to common values, common to all the communities, and a common basic morality that everybody agrees with, and common purposes that benefit all, but do not go beyond that and start telling different communities that, no, you have to change and conform to this or conform to that. You can't live in peace that way. That's the problem we have in the United States today. Federal government is not restrained to what the Constitution allows it to do. So there, there's nothing wrong with having an Islamic community. Not at all. With Islamic schools. As, as long as these communities agree that in order to live together, we have to have 
certain common values, recognize that, and re restrain certain impulses that we might have to try to make everybody else like us. Doesn't work. Certain uh, global aspirations, for example, uh, that, that might involve not simply education or, you know, um, evangelizing others, but trying to enforce our particular beliefs on others. That's where you end up with things like ISIS. And, you know, there's, uh, we have to realize that some of these stuff, okay, uh, God's coming, uh, the Messiah's coming, uh, Islam has similar beliefs. He can sort these things out when he comes. Some of these things we can't fix, but we, today, we can't fix past injustices, but we can stop the present injustices. And we can live together if we want to live together on a, a basis of common values, family values, traditional values that we all hold together. After all, uh, Christians and Muslims, we constitute the vast majority of the world as far as religion goes. Uh, atheists really don't, that's not really a religion and they don't have any beliefs. So <laughs> we need to fix that, but you can't do it by force. Christians and Muslims, we can live together. There's no barrier if we want to. Recognizing each other as, as God's people, as, as his creation, as human beings, equally human beings. But any ideology that makes you special, that you're, you're intrinsically different than others, that you are more important and more valuable than others, is toxic. And that's a Zionist project. It has no place in this world. As I said, maybe Musk can designate them as the, the first inhabitants in his Martian colony or something. But considering what happened in 70 AD inside the city of Jerusalem, I don't think that colony would last long at all. Because Jews have problems living with themselves, let alone living with others. So it's, I mean, Judaism prospered in places like Germany and other places. As long as people weren't stirring up hatred, either way. We can live together, but you can't have a Zionist entity. You can't have the Zionist project. You can't have your own country with your own rules and oppress others and displace others, no. No, if you want to if if you want to live in an area, you have to be willing to live at peace with the other people that live in that area. Otherwise, you're dangerous. So this, what's going on now, it has to stop. It has to stop. Eventually, the world will, you know, it will be stopped. It cannot go on. Israel will become the global pariah. Well, it already is. But uh, the United, even the United States will turn against it based on what they're doing. This is impossible. And if, when the American people finally find out what's really been going on there since 1948 uh, and stop believing the Hollywood movies that they're, they've seen and look at the, find out about the truth. And, and this is where the Palestinians need to take some actions. I would say especially the Christian Palestinians because Christians generally aren't terror, aren't vengeance is something that Christians are forbidden in the New Testament. He said don't take your own vengeance, leave that to God. Leave space for God's vengeance. Don't take your own revenge. Not the Christians consistently follow the teachings of Jesus and his apostles. Oh, God help us. But uh, in some sense, we're better able to proclaim peace because there isn't an element of in true Christian. There's no true Christian supremacist. There's no such thing. Uh, those that follow Jesus are not going to be killing others. No, 
there's there's been a lot of people that call themselves Christians that are not Christians, and that's been the history of the world. The Crusaders, they were not Christians. They were not serving Jesus Christ at all. They weren't following him. They didn't know him because uh, the Roman Catholicism had so obscured Christ that they were just simply following a system of man-made religion. So what's what's the end game here? What is the necessary end game? Well, two-state solution is not the end game. The end game here is uh, people living together in peace under uh, common shared values. So you have a like a federal government that is restricted and can only govern it with the consent. We need something that's not uh, what would possibly work is something a bit a little bit like was it at Lebanon one time. So you have. Uh, instead of direct democracy or something like that, it, it, you'd have more like a, uh, or you have to have a balance. A, 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 in some ways, this has been attempted in the past, but it has to be worked out here. Where you have the different communities that have to say, the communities have to be agree. So if you have Jews, and Muslims, we have distinct communities and uh, Christians for the central government, the federal government to, to do things, they have to all agree. So every community gets a veto, so it has to be agreeable to all the communities. And like if you have a central a federal government that has limited authority and only exists for the common good of the whole, then that shouldn't be a problem. Maintaining that's a problem. It's like the United States has failed. The United States system is a failed system because of that, a failure to uh, limit the power of, you know, there's always an uh, urge in, huma in humanity to centralize power. It's a sinful urge. Uh, so it has to be resisted. And when you don't resist that and you allow the accumulation of power for temporary or personal advantage, then you get evil. You always have to keep the interests of others in mind, which is a Christian virtue that we do not often manifest. But it is a requirement. We are supposed to manifest that. It's, anything else would be contrary to Christ. So the, the, these are not viable states. Uh, Israel is not a viable state, too. It's dependent on the United States. It's a dependency. It's not an independent state. Which is why, uh, well, there was a chant, there were protests the other day at the White House in, in Washington, huge protests, and they were chanting, uh, hey, hey, ho, ho, genocide Joe has got to go. Yeah, the United States is responsible. The United States shares the guilt of genocide in allowing Israel to continue this because Biden could simply pick the phone up and say, Netanyahu, Benny, stop it now. You're a bad boy, stop it. Or I'm going to spank you. I mean, the guy that took corn pops behind the barn to give him a beating should uh, should be able to handle that, right? <sighs> no, see, that's Israel's taking advantage of the incredible weakness. They know how weak and pliable Biden is. Otherwise, they wouldn't have dared do this. And they're taking advantage of their own errors and their own panic and massacre and blame it on Hamas in order to do this work of genocide. Sinful humanity. They are not, we are all capable of doing things like this. That's one of the problems. <laughs> uh, that's one of the things Jesus came to begin the fixing of broken humanity. This, this sinfulness, we have to, if we can't see the sinfulness in our own hearts, well, th then we can't ever live with, in peace with others because we're the problem. We are the problem. What, if we watch, if we look at what's going on in Israel as just simply another form of entertainment and just say, oh, isn't this terrible and remain silent, then we have guilt by not speaking against it. You 
important. There's, there's limits, very serious limits to what we can do individually, but there are things we can do. I mean, you can bombard the White House with messages saying, stop it now, Joe. I mean, they're supposed to be, I don't know, maybe they took it down. There used to be uh, uh, where petitions were available at the White House, and if you had so many people sign them, they'd look at them. I mean, I don't know if that's still there or not. People can check the White House website. But we, the, at why there will be terrorism against the United States, why there will be revenge against the United States, and that's what it is, revenge. It's not terrorism. It's revenge for all the deaths in Gaza. You think 9-11's, it's going to happen again because of what the United States is doing and not doing. We are enabling this. Our president is not a person of sound mind or a person of moral integrity. He is not a good man. Uh, he never was a good man, and he's morally corrupt. And I, don't, I think everybody can recognize that. And he's now weak. So you've got a weak old man that's pliable, that believes what Netanyahu tells him, including beheaded babies. Netanyahu repeated the lie to Biden. And Biden goes, tells a story that he actually saw pictures of it. He never saw those pictures. The White House came out and said, no, there wasn't pictures. Of course not. Biden just makes up stories. He's, he's a delusional old man. He's always made up stories. He's, there are people like that. They, they can't quite tell the difference between reality and what's fantasy. Uh, and it's, he's one of them. He's, he, he can't be, I mean, somebody's got to take his car keys away. He's for the good of the nation and his own good. Uh, but Netanyahu has taken advantage of this and the Zionist project is not just Netanyahu taking advantage of the weakness in Washington, the fact that they purchased all the all the Congress with campaign funding, purchased them. Why does Israel have its own lobbyist street, J Street? There, I mean, it's APAC. Uh, this this is uh, uh, corrupt. Why why do they get a lobbying group? A foreign power has a lobbying group in Washington that buys the Congress, APAC. That's what it is. They're lobbying for a foreign power. This should not be tolerated, but it is because they hand out cash. Whether they literally hand out cash or do it some other way, they're handing out uh, uh, money to get their desires. And they've got plenty of money to hand out, which makes them powerful. Money runs Washington. Not voters, money. With money, you can control what voters believe. You can influence what people think if you have money. If you don't, your means are much more limited. But you still have a voice if you use it. So the, the only solution there uh, prior to the return of, of the Messiah is a everybody has to learn to live in peace. And it is possible. It is the, the festering sore of the injustice done to the Palestinian people that prevents it. Again, you can't undo the past, but you can stop the, the injustice today. If Israel had the courage, they could do it. Regardless of Biden, what would you do? What would I do if I was had the authority? Well, the first thing, if I was Israel, I would do. Would I would oh, I would immediately and unconditionally release all the Palestinians in detention. Take the first step. Open up the border to Gaza. Open up the supply. Stop the genocide immediately. 
and then began to dismantle the apartheid state, tear down the walls, begin, go out there and begin to take the barriers down, begin to take the walls down in the sight of the whole world, in the sight of the Palestinian people, and say, confess your sin, we have sinned. But if you, you, there's no sense in confessing your sins if you don't stop it. And then begin to build something other than the Zionist project. Realize what you've done and repent. Change your mind. That's what the word repent not means. The Greek word is metanoia. Change your mind. Change what you're thinking. Change your mind from your wickedness toward God and what's right in his sight. <sighs> then there can be peace. It's not impossible if you want it, if everybody wants it. The Palestinians have to put away their, their desires for vengeance. They'll have to if they want peace. Do they want peace for their children for the children that will come. Vengeance doesn't bring peace to the dead, nor to the living. It doesn't heal. Forgiveness heals. Mercy heals. Love heals. Justice doesn't heal. But the injustice must stop or there will be no healing. 